Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's do the review of the Samsung Galaxy M30s and I know quite a few of you have been asking about this one and now I've used this for almost about 10 days. So I'll divide this review between pros and cons. What do I like about it and what other things do I, I do not like and there's a huge list guys. Here are the pros and a big list of cons. So let's go over them. But uh, before we proceed, here are the specs for the Galaxy M30s. As you can see, it is having a 6.4 inch Full HD AMOLED screen. It's part with the new Exynos 9611 octa-core processor that's based on 10 nanometer process. It has that massive 6000 milliamp hour battery. Also triple camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel depth. Front facing is a 16 megapixel. And other specs are on the screen for your reference. So let's quickly break it down between the pros and cons. And first, uh, let's talk about the screen because it's an AMOLED screen and that's the main thing that you see. And again, as it's a Samsung screen, as you can see, the quality is really good. It's a 6.4 inch AMOLED screen, uh, but the good thing is that it's a proper Full HD Plus screen. Yes, you have that uh, notch, but again, if you notice, the screen quality is really good on this one. I don't have any problems with this one. So they didn't compromise on the screen. And uh, again, uh, it's, you also have the auto brightness and all these things, I'll talk about it uh, Later, guys and again it's the one ui that you are getting on this and even we have dolby atmos uh, on this one and uh, again in general day-to-day -day operations i did not uh, notice any major lag on this phone guys uh, as you can see it's running on the uh, new one ui and uh, still it's running on android 9 uh, so yes it's supposed to get android uh, 10 but i don't know when in that department i would say samsung is a little bit slow so you have to be uh, aware of that so but typical one ui that you are getting on this one as you can see and also you get that digital well-being and all that stuff and now moving to the processor some of you were asking this one has a new exynos uh, processor uh, this is the new exynos 9611 and this is also an octa-core processor based on 10 nanometer process and i would say in general operations i did not notice much lag with this phone yes i would say i noticed a minor lag about five percent of the time but guys i was spoiled uh, before coming to this device i was using the rog phone 2 and even the oneplus uh, 70. Uh, so i did notice minor uh, lags at times i would say very minor most of you won't notice but after using this phone for two three days uh, continuously then i'm not noticing uh, lag so again in terms of performance this processor is actually much improved than earlier mid-range exynos processors that we have so i have no issues with that uh, now moving to another thing is that uh, i really like uh, the fact that samsung uh, is allowing us this always on screen as you can see as it's an amulet screen i appreciate it and i did all my testing while keeping it on this always on uh, display guys so you have that and i think so you have to use it because it does not have any physical led notification light on this uh, device uh, now moving to uh, another thing is that uh, guys i'll be very fair i tested this uh, device with just airtel because my other sim is in the iphone 11 that's my geo sim and i even traveled during this time to delhi and i have to say in terms of cellular call quality uh, it was actually good even in this room i could take some calls i would say it was not getting disconnected so the cellular connectivity is actually fine on this one and also moving to the earpiece i like the fact that the earpiece is actually really good it's crystal clear on this one and um, during my almost 10 days of usage uh, none of the parties complained me about the call quality so that's actually nice but now when we talk about the speaker we just have a single speaker over here and i would say it's adequately loud but i wished it was slightly louder uh, don't get me wrong it's not bad but uh, at times i felt when i was watching some of the youtube videos uh, which don't optimize the volume uh, even at max i felt that the volume was a little bit low but in terms of ringtone and stuff it was fine i wished it was slightly louder but again i am telling that because i compare a lot of phones uh, for most of the people it's average speaker quality that you're getting and now if we talk about uh, the 3.5 mm headphone jack it also has a 3.5 mm headphone jack and i did listen to a lot of music uh, on uh, this one and i would say uh, the audio output that you get is good on this one yes you can tweak the sound a little bit uh, with the equalizer if you have if you are uh, listening to mp3 songs and stuff but general output was actually good i don't have i won't complain considering the price point of this device uh, now if we talk about uh, another big thing about this device is that 
uh, this is the only mid-range phone as of now in the Indian market that comes with a massive 6000 mAh battery. And I was also very, very scared when I got this phone. How would be the uh, weight balance of this uh, device? Because it's having that massive 6000 mAh battery. And I would say in this department, Samsung did a great job. It simply does not feel that it has a 6000 uh, mAh battery because the weight balance is done very well. And in fact, it does not weigh that much. It weighs just 180 or 189 grams and this is a lot less than many of the phones that come with a 5000 milliamp power battery and i think so they're able to achieve this because the entire back as you can see the body of this phone is made of this polycarbonate uh, so that's the reason it, it uh, does not feel that heavy uh, so again if you're worried about the weight uh, it feels like many of the phones that come with a 5000 milliamp hour battery. Now, as we are talking about the battery, as you expected, the battery life is actually really good on this phone uh, because it for, I would say for normal users, you can easily get about two days worth of battery life. And if you're even a sort of a very heavy user, you can get about one and a half days worth of battery life. For example, as I've told you, I was traveling, I traveled one day to Delhi and I had to leave the house, it was an early flight, 6.30 in the morning. And I came back the same day from Delhi and I came back at about 11, o'clock or something and uh, from morning till evening i was using just this phone in delhi using gps everything always on mobile data and stuff even at 11 30 at night as you can see it had 57 ba uh, percent battery life left so again the battery life is the trump card of this phone if you're looking for a mid-range uh, smartphone with the highest criteria is battery life then you can easily go with this one even for normal users about two days of battery life and for casual users i would say almost three days it can give uh, i was posting my battery stats on twitter and many of you who are actually using this phone shared some uh, what do you say screenshots uh, you guys are getting about eight hours nine hours i saw even 10 hours worth of sot on this one with over a day of usage so battery life is the trump card of this device now uh, let's also talk about gaming i did gaming in fact i already posted a video about it with pubg and i could play pubg as i've told you and i also tried it with call of duty and it could play call of duty also fine but with call of duty the graphics was set at medium graphics uh, and i couldn't go to the higher uh, graphic option but at medium it played it very smoothly uh, yes it can do gaming uh, as you uh, see with this pubg it could play even at the highest setting but i would say if you're sort of a hardcore gamer then i would not recommend you this phone the reason is that uh, with pubg uh, after about 15 minutes of gaming the handset tend to get actually pretty hot that was not the case with call of duty but for some reason with pubg it was getting pretty hot so i would say if you are a hardcore gamer and your primary uh, reason for getting this phone is for gaming then i would say go with snapdragon counterparts like the uh, some of the phones from xiaomi or realme those will be better for gaming but apart from that yes if you're a sort of casual a user just plays uh, play game one here on there yes it can definitely do gaming now let's also talk about the camera on this one because it has the triple camera setup and now samsung is putting that 48 megapixel camera on this one we also have a ultra wide and then we have the 5 megapixel for depth and the front facing is a 16 megapixel and i would say uh, as you can see with the sample shots the 48 megapixel camera actually does a pretty good job in outdoor conditions yes it tries to oversaturate the color a little bit but overall i would say as you can see with these sample shots the picture quality is really good now even moving to indoor lighting i expected that it wouldn't do that good but as you can see with the sample shots it did decently but again if the lighting goes really low you got to be careful with this one otherwise the pictures will come out a little bit soft and also uh, this simply does not have any sort of stabilization when you're taking static pictures so you have to be careful because as you can see i took these two pictures and while uh, taking the pictures and artificial lighting uh, I shake the camera a little bit so you can get that shake so you got to be careful with that one and even in artificial lighting i would say it does a decent job but again you got to be again careful with human subjects as you can see some of the shots as you can see uh, here came out good but some of them were a little bit softer and blurry so again it's sort of a mixed bag i would say in artificial lighting with human subjects uh coming to uh what do you say close-up macro charts it can take but i would say don't go too close as you can see here i tried to go too close to the subject and it started blurring so that is something you have to uh, note now going to the front facing camera the front facing camera is a 16 megapixel and outdoor shots as you can see it came out good even with the 
portrait more it came out good but uh, when we move to indoor lighting conditions and artificial lighting conditions i feel the front face in camera is also struggling a little bit uh, as you can see some of the shots came out to be hazy and blurry uh, yes you can definitely take some shots as you can see i got these two shots with the front facing camera good but again it's sort of a hit or a miss in artificial lighting shooting this video with the rear facing camera and this is in the regular mode and as you can see guys i'm just walking to give you an idea how is the video recording and it also allows video recording in the wide angle mode so let's switch to that and see how it does so now guys as you can see i'm in the wide angle mode and i'm just going to do the same thing i'm just going to walk around so this is a video in the uh, ultra wide angle mode now shooting this part of the video with the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy M30s and as you can see guys I'm just walking around and the audio is also being recorded via its internal microphone. So this should give you an idea how is the video uh, with the front facing uh, camera of this Galaxy M30s. So now let's move to the cons. What are the things that I did not like on this phone? And the one peculiar thing that I noticed on this phone is that uh, almost every modern phone has a compass. So I download the compass app and here if I fire this up as you can see it's just idiotically wrong it just shows you the wrong stuff almost all the time keeps rotating like this let me show it on the galaxy fold and everything this is wrong as you can see it just goes wrong so again you got to be careful with this you just simply cannot trust the compass app on uh, this smartphone uh, so again it's very very buggy i don't know why uh, even it's showing that it's working. It simply does not work. Uh, it's showing wrong directions and stuff. So you got to be careful with this. I did try Google Maps also with this one. And uh, with Google uh, Maps, it worked fine when there was a direct line of sight because it was using GPS. But sometimes when we are under multiple flyovers, uh, it doesn't have a direct GPS connection. Uh, and there, Compass helps. And here, it just goes bonkers. So that is something you have to note. If you rely too much on, what do you say, Google Maps and navigation because of the faulty compass i don't know if i can recommend you this uh, smartphone and uh, now moving to another thing is that uh, as i've told you uh, it has that auto brightness sensor i've disabled it uh, but the thing is that it does not have a dedicated auto brightness sensor what uh, actually samsung is doing is actually they're using the front facing camera for the auto brightness and it works don't get me wrong it's not bad it works but I feel because of that, it does consume quite a bit of battery because in my top uh, 10 apps, what was using the battery, uh, the auto brightness sensor was generally in the fifth or sixth position. So that is also something you got to note. But again, it's not a big issue with this device because it has that massive 6000 milliamp hour uh, battery. But again, that was something that I have noticed. Uh, now moving to uh, another thing is that uh, it has this 6.4 inch screen and uh, I would say I don't know if it's visible here because of this the camera is able to pick it up or not. Uh, if you notice we have some scratches over here and uh, the thing is that uh, Samsung does not specify what kind of glass protection do we have on this one. And I use this phone roughly guys uh, and um, within a week uh, as you can see I've got some scratches over here. And the thing is that Samsung also does not uh, uh, pre-apply any screen guard or anything on this device. So if you're buying this uh, phone, apply a screen guard on this one. And uh, this is small nitpicking, I would say, and not a deal breaker. Uh, the uh, fingerprint scanner is over here and it works fine. As you can see, it works fine. But I felt it is not the fastest because these days we have uh, quite a few phones that have a much faster fingerprint scanner uh, than this one. This won't bother you, you get used to it. But again, that is also something that I have noticed. Now moving to one big uh, thing that I'm noticing with these uh, Samsung mid-range devices is that if you, uh, you go over here, again, I have removed it, you are getting, uh, what do you say, unnecessary adds kind of a notification like what we generally see on uh, Xiaomi phones, even on this one. There is that My Galaxy app that shows unnecessary notifications so again, be aware of that. And while you're setting up the phone, there are some options like casserole, marketing. Uh, many users just say agree to all. If you do that, you will see unnecessary notifications a lot more. So you got to be careful. In fact, watch the uh, video that I posted about six months ago. I had a similar situation with the Samsung Galaxy A50, if I recall, and I made a dedicated video, what you should do while you're setting up to remove that. So, and you need to do this uh, while you are setting up the phone. Otherwise, you will get those unnecessary ads. It's sad to 
see that Samsung is also sort of following what uh, what do you say uh, Xiaomi is doing. Uh, that my galaxy app comes here and it shows you unnecessary notifications it pushes you to install uh, this or that app so that is something that i do not uh, like and uh, overall i would say it's a fine device and uh, now moving to the updates also uh, during the i think so i unboxed this almost a month ago and i got two updates during that time and it's very funny that the first update goofed up the camera quite a bit uh, but now just uh, about four five days ago i also got one more update that fixed the camera and but still even with this this is the latest update that we have if i go to the about the phone software it's still showing the august security update uh, so again they are a little bit slow in terms of update as you can see so i don't know when uh, will this uh, device get the android 10 update it will get but the question is then uh, so overall as you can see it's a pretty good mid-range device for 14,000 you're getting that uh, six uh, six thousand milliamp hour battery and the general performance is also good so you can go for this but again as I've told you I won't recommend this one for heavy gamers uh, because uh, with heavy gaming at least with PUBG I noticed that the back was getting a little bit uh, warm and also the camera uh, front facing camera in indoor lighting conditions was struggling a little bit uh, many people ask me to compare with Xiaomi and Realme yes if you're opting for Xiaomi and Realme devices if you spend a little bit more you can get uh, devices with the better Snapdragon SOCs which are better for gamers but I know quite a few of you who do not want Chinese uh, related smartphones due to privacy or security reasons and if you're that kind of a person if, and if you don't do a lot of gaming then yes certainly you can have a look at the Samsung Galaxy M30s and to be frank guys uh, this uh, handset perform much better than I expected. Anyways, guys, that is it for the review of the Samsung Galaxy M30s. And uh, if you guys are still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.